Illegal mining in South Africa is a vast and complex issue that has far-reaching implications for the country's economy, environment, and society. Recently, a startling revelation from Sorel Seyo, leader of the Zoma Zoma group Turin E.A. Moketa, has cast a spotlight on the scale of operations within these illegal mining networks. Seyo claims that his organization collects an astonishing R135 million monthly from its 900,000 members, with each contributing R150. This claim highlights the significant financial resources flowing through illegal mining operations and raises critical questions about how such a system operates, the ripple effects it creates, and what can be done to address this burgeoning crisis. To fully grasp the implications of this disclosure, we must first delve into the historical and socio-economic context of illegal mining in South Africa. The country's mining industry has long been one of its most significant economic drivers, tracing back to the discovery of diamonds in Kimberley in 1867 and gold on the Witwatersrand Rand in 1886. These discoveries set the stage for South Africa to become one of the world's leading mining nations. However, while the mining industry generated immense wealth, it also created deep inequalities. Black workers, for example, were systematically excluded from the benefits of mining wealth, relegated to low-wage, high-risk jobs under harsh working conditions. This legacy of inequality persisted throughout the apartheid era and beyond. When apartheid officially ended in 1994, many hoped that South Africa's newfound democracy would usher in an era of shared prosperity. Yet, systemic issues like poverty, unemployment, and unequal access to resources remained entrenched, particularly in mining communities. Over the years, as mining companies sought to cut costs or shifted their focus to more profitable ventures, many formal mines closed, leaving behind abandoned shafts and unemployed workers. These conditions created a fertile ground for illegal mining to take root. Illegal mining, or the activities of Zoma Zomas, is driven by desperation for many. The term Zoma Zoma, derived from a Zulu phrase meaning to try and try again, reflects the risks miners are willing to take in pursuit of economic survival. Operating in abandoned mines and tunnels, these miners extract gold, diamonds, and other valuable resources without the safety measures or regulatory oversight present in formal mining operations. This not only puts their lives in jeopardy but also creates significant environmental and social challenges. The sheer scale of illegal mining operations, as suggested by Seyu's statement, reveals a highly organized system. Managing contributions from 900,000 members monthly is no small feat, it requires sophisticated coordination and infrastructure. Such an operation likely involves various layers of leadership, logistical networks, and financial systems to handle and distribute the funds. Yet, this raises a troubling question, how does an organization of this magnitude operate so openly without detection or intervention from authorities? The implications are deeply unsettling, pointing to possible corruption or complicity at multiple levels of governance. The financial implications of illegal mining are staggering. By some estimates, the illegal mining industry in South Africa is worth billions of rands annually. This not only diverts significant resources away from the formal economy but also undermines the country's ability to attract foreign investment. When minerals are extracted and sold on the black market, the government loses out on tax revenue that could have been used for public services like education, healthcare, and infrastructure development. Furthermore, the informal nature of this trade means that miners themselves often earn a fraction of the true value of the resources they extract, perpetuating cycles of poverty. The environmental costs of illegal mining are equally severe. Without proper oversight or regulations, the methods used by Zoma Zomas often result in significant ecological damage. Toxic chemicals like mercury and cyanide, frequently used in gold extraction, can seep into water sources, endangering local ecosystems and communities. Deforestation, soil erosion, 
and the collapse of abandoned mine shafts are additional hazards that have long-term consequences for both the environment and human safety. These issues underscore the need for a comprehensive approach to addressing illegal mining, one that balances economic, social, and environmental priorities. The social dimension of illegal mining cannot be ignored. Many Zomazomas are migrants from neighboring countries like Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and Lesotho. Drawn by the promise of better opportunities, they often find themselves in precarious situations, living in informal settlements and working under exploitative conditions. This influx of foreign miners has fueled tensions in already struggling communities, sometimes escalating into violent clashes. Additionally, the presence of armed syndicates and turf wars among rival groups has led to further violence, creating an atmosphere of fear and insecurity in mining regions. In response to these challenges, the South African government has taken steps to combat illegal mining. Law enforcement agencies, including the South African Police Service, SAPS, and the South African National Defense Force, SANDF, have conducted raids on illegal mining operations, smelting facilities, and supply chains. These efforts have led to arrests, equipment seizures, and the closure of some mining shafts. However, while these actions disrupt certain aspects of the trade, they often fail to dismantle the larger networks that coordinate and profit from illegal mining activities. Critics argue that enforcement alone is insufficient to address the root causes of illegal mining. Tackling the problem requires a multifaceted approach that goes beyond arrests and asset seizures. For instance, initiatives aimed at creating alternative livelihoods for those involved in illegal mining could help reduce the economic desperation that drives people into this trade. Rehabilitating abandoned mines and integrating them into formal economic structures is another potential solution. Additionally, greater efforts are needed to address corruption within regulatory and enforcement agencies, as well as to strengthen international cooperation to disrupt cross-border smuggling networks. Looking to the future, the path forward will require bold and innovative solutions. Governments, private sector players, and civil society must work together to address the socio-economic inequalities that fuel illegal mining. At the same time, improved regulatory frameworks, technological innovations, and international collaboration can help curb the trade. Public awareness campaigns and community involvement will also be critical in shifting attitudes and encouraging sustainable practices. If you found this discussion thought-provoking, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share your insights in the comments below. How do you think South Africa should navigate this crisis? Should the focus be on enforcement, rehabilitation, or a combination of both? Your input matters, and we'd love to hear your perspective. And if you're new here, subscribe to Mzansi Moments for more in-depth explorations of the pressing issues shaping our nation.